Hello everyone. Today is the 8th of July, 2024. A nice warm summer day. It's in the afternoon. Temps in the 90s. My favorite kind of weather. Haven't done a whole lot to the car lately. Uh, just a couple small things. Uh, I also worked a couple of hours on uh, David Ramsey's 67 convertible, that beautiful black car in uh, Catonsville, Maryland. Uh, I even have a short little video clip that I'll include in this update of him driving it in the garage after he let me drive it. That was very enjoyable. I wanted to see how it compared to how this one handles. But his definitely handles a little better than mine in the steering. Even though his steering wheel has more play than mine does, it doesn't have that that feeling when I'm going around curves that this one has. A little bit unstable still, but uh, so I thought that was interesting. So I'll continue to work on his car. We still didn't get the top quite working yet, so we're going to replace the last component that can be replaced in that system, which is this uh, proportioning valve where all the lines go through to distribute the fluid to the, the different the two top cylinders using the, uh, the old uh, tried and true method where you just replace all the parts until magically it starts working. It working that way, but he's, uh, he seems fine with that, so I appreciate that. The two things that I've done on this car, well, I'll just show them to you. The, uh, the bracket here came in about a week ago from Mark II Enterprises for my rearview mirror. What a blessing that is to have a mirror that's not constantly falling down, so I was very happy to receive that. I could have gotten a cheaper version through eBay, but I couldn't guarantee it was the right one, so I went with uh, Mark II, so I knew they would send me the right one. The other thing I got done, finally, was replacing the um, anti-icing switch, which you see right here, and this one actually works. I ran the air conditioning on it extensively a few days ago when I was driving this car, and it works well. Uh, the only thing I don't like, and then I'm going to have to modify a bit, is I've got to find a way to bend these uh, terminals so they point this way, because the way it is right now, they sit up way too high, uh, and they interfere with me getting this little cover back on. So I'm going to figure out a way to make that work. And I'm just realizing now, just looking at it, that may not solve my problem bending it down, but I'm going to try it anyway. I want to get that to get that cover on there so it has that finished look. Um, as I mentioned, I drove this car extensively. Uh, I put about 250 miles on it that same day. I drove it again to Baltimore to work on David's car, and then I took it on uh, some work stops. Where I had to go into Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and drove it back. It ran great. The air conditioning worked nicely. It's not as cold as my, my 2011, but it's still cold enough it certainly was comfortable you know in these 90 degree high humidity days it, it left quite a puddle of water underneath uh, the car so I know it's working and it's doing what it's supposed to be doing uh, I did have one issue though where I had to pull into pit row one time at the end of my uh, after my last stop I noted I left the car running while I was doing my photos each time and there was this noise coming from under the hood I was afraid to open the hood you know you just I was like what's wrong now you know kind of a feeling but I finally did I opened the hood and it was immediately apparent what was causing the noise. The, uh, the belt here had stretched some more, and it was just flapping, and it was hitting this shield right here, and it was making a lot of racket doing that. So I, uh, I had all my tools with me still, since I had just worked on David's car. So I pulled over, and I tightened the out of there pulley. It's almost at its max adjustment now. I mean, it doesn't really have much adjustment left. So if that belt stretches any more, I might have to get a uh, belt that's slightly shorter. I don't know. I mean, right now it's fine. And it probably uh, was doing a better job of running the compressor, since I imagine it was probably slipping a little bit on the pulley there. Um, so that was my adventure that day, and it was a lot of fun. But man, did I eat the gas. Oh my gosh, this thing gets terrible gas mileage. You all know about that. That's why this car is not at all practical for, you know, a daily driver. But it sure is fun to drive. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the uh, fruits of my labor right now. So... Uh, I got an update this morning from uh, George Borelli in Florida. He's the one that's been working diligently on my cruise control servo. And um, I had to send it back to him because the first time it didn't work. Uh, he, uh, he developed some additional test procedures. He did some more work on it. He simulated actually using it. Uh, I don't know how he did it exactly, but he uh, said he got it up to speed. He simulated turning the on button on and, and pushing the button in the uh, turn signal stock. And he said it did work as far as his testing could tell. So uh, he has uh, shipped it back to me. I should have it uh, definitely by the end of this week. So I'm very excited to uh, try that again. Don't have an update on my 
clock. I had to send that back in too for warranty repair. I uh, hope to have that back in another week or two. But uh, let's see what else. Oh, I've decided I'm tired of uh, messing with these rear brakes. I mean, they work okay. But you still have a little bit of shuddering because, you know, I'm sure I did some damage uh, driving it the way I did with the parking brake dragging like it was. And I, I'm sure the drums are way out of uh, way out of specs as far as, you know, I had them turned. But, you know, my mechanic was nice and he didn't even try to measure them because he figured that they were probably out of specs. And I decided I'm just going to bite the bullet. Not right away because I can drive the car as is and I have spent a lot of money. I need to recover a little bit from that. But... Um, I am going to go ahead and buy the uh, the uh, drums that Mark II Enterprises uh, sells uh, that are designed to work on this car. I'm also going to replace the brake shoes at the same time, and uh, I'm going to see how it does with that. I expect it'll be fine uh, at that point. I'm not going to do that right away, but I will eventually do that because I'm not satisfied with the brakes the way they are right now. And the other thing that I want to still work on is re-aiming, you know, trying to bend the uh, the right front headlights back out where uh, you know it, it feels better to drive it at night than it does right now. I really can't drive this car at night because of the way the headlights are from that accident this car suffered many years ago. Um, so I'm just going to work on getting that cover back on the uh, anti-icing switch, and that's probably going to be it for today. This is not a free car. All right, so here's where I'm at with this anti-icing switch trying to get this cover on. Um, the original design was different in where this little probe came out on this side, you know, directly where this slot is, and, it all, and these were also repositioned on the original switch to where these wires came out the same hole. The way this is set up, even though I just bent uh, these two tabs down with a couple of uh, needle nose pliers, that part was easy, but now these wires are going to, you know, they're only going to go out that way. So what I'm going to be forced to do is drill a couple of holes, one on each side, because of the way these work. I don't want to drill a single hole. I'm just going to drill two small holes, get those wires through here instead of a slot like that, and then um, just feed the wires through them. I don't know. That's kind of tricky, though. I see why they have this slot here, because that means, and I'm not sure that will work, just talking this through, because if I do that, Oh yeah, I can do that because I can feed the uh, the other ends of these wires through, so it should work. Anyway, that's what I'm thinking. I'm going to drill drill two holes big enough to get the wiring through and make it work like that. So I'm having to modify the cover. is already damaged somewhat anyway, so I'm not too worried about modifying the cover. I just need to make it functional. So that's where I'm at right now. All right, in order to get this to work the way I wanted to, first I had to drill that that new hole right here. That worked fine. Just had to get enough big enough drill bit. I ended up having to do another 90 degree bend in the uh, the terminals themselves that hook onto the uh, onto the switch in order to make this work right because I had to get the wiring pointed down so I could get it out here. So now it's all connected. Looks relatively good. Most people that didn't know better wouldn't realize that that's uh, a change from the original design. So I'm going to test this real quick to make sure it's still working. So I've unplugged my compressor here. I'm going to turn on the ignition. And then uh, turn on the uh, the system even without the car running, so I can hear and see the uh, compressor clicking. So here we go. Here goes the test. Yeah, there it went. I don't know if you can see it moving or not, but but it did. It worked. So that means I didn't destroy the anti-icing switch with what I did here. So that's that. All right, so that concludes this uh, short update. Um, don't have a lot to do right now. Don't really want to be spending a lot of time on it anymore anyway. Um, just want a driver. So when the uh, cruise control comes in later this week, you know I'll be driving it then and taking you for a test drive with me. Uh, but until then, I'll just keep enjoying it as she is. Have a nice day.